Hi, I'm James Hazelrig, also known as Cedric the Fiddler, from Fiddlefan.com, uh, your blog about all sorts of interesting things related to fiddles, and today I just want to do a little show and tell uh, regarding two of my favorite instruments. This is the first of them. Her name is Valkyrie, and um, what is it? Well, she's a fiddle, but fiddle is a pretty broad term. You know, fiddle can mean... Uh, anything from a little tiny, you know, three-stringed rebec up to a giant double bass. Um, a viola can be a fiddle. A cello can be a fiddle, even though your standard violins. The usual fiddle, pretty much anything with a bow and strings and a uh, and a folk style of playing it can be a fiddle. So this one is kind of an interesting animal. Um, the guy who makes it, and I'm going to do a whole review about his company, but it's it's Song Chung Instrument Company over in China. Um, he calls it a viola de more, and I don't I don't quite like that term for this, but I'll uh, I'll get into that in just a minute. So the fascinating thing about this instrument, um, which I guess I'd call it a violino de more, it's like a smaller version of the viola de more. Now that viola de more back in uh, the 1700s was an instrument that varied in the number of strings it had. Uh, it usually had up to seven up top, and that's kind of where it settled in on was seven. And then seven sympathetic strings, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, I might put in a few pictures up a little closer, but there are actually four strings that run underneath uh, the fingerboard. They go through little holes in the bridge, uh, they go down a channel in the fingerboard, they come out through that fingerboard and then go into an auxiliary uh, extended peg box down here at the end. So uh, people are always saying, well, why do you, how do you play the four extra strings? Or uh, with the violas de more back in the day, how did they play the extra seven? You don't. They vibrate sympathetically. Um, now, that doesn't mean that they're really nice and let you cry on their shoulder. Uh, what that means is that when you make a sound, other things that are tuned to the same frequency will vibrate sympathetically with it. Um, and it's not just the exact pitch, it's also a whole harmonic series. I'm not going to get into all of the physics of music theory right here, because I don't understand a lot of it, to be honest. Uh, but that doesn't matter. I can still still play the fiddle. So this one, uh, this is the first Violino de More that I, I acquired. And it's got four strings, and they're tuned uh, when I tune them. Uh, G, D, A, E, just like a four-string violin. And then it's got the four underneath, and uh, I've found the tuning I like for those is D, E, F, or F sharp, and A. Now, I've actually tuned this one down to an F to specialize in playing in D minor. It can play in any key, but it's going to get the most resonance in, in D minor. Uh, so, that's the thing, really, about... Uh, a viola de more with seven strings, those were typically tuned to one key, usually D, and they were perfect for playing in that one key. The problem is that, you know, I'm a fiddler, I go around, I play with a lot of different people, I sit in with a lot of different people. Only being able to play well in one key isn't going to hack it. And really the violin with its four strings and no sympathetic strings is designed to be a compromise. It's not going to sound as great in any one key as an instrument with sympathetic strings, but it can sound really good in all of the keys. It can, it, it can sound equally good, well, pretty close to that, in all different keys. Also, if you think about, um, I've got to tune twice as many strings to get this one to work, and let me tell you, those sympathetic strings, they're a little cantankerous. So imagine that you had an entire orchestra and all the string players had twice as many strings to tune, which means twice as many to get out of tune. Uh, not really an ideal instrument for those settings. So I think that's why we moved away from sympathetic strings. But the fact is, man, they just sound really cool. And I'm going to do some other videos where I do a lot of playing, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, you know strike a few notes here for you. <laughs> that 
extra ringing, that extra echo. It's almost like you've got a little bit of plate reverb or, or just a tiny bit of chorus applied to the instrument without any sort of electronic enhancements. So um, this one, like I said, is Valkyrie. And uh, when people ask what is she, I say she's a Violino de More. She's got uh, mixed Italian and Norwegian roots, and uh, but she was born in China. Uh, made by Huang Shang Lan. I'm getting that name wrong, I'm sure. And uh, what I mentioned those Norwegian roots. There is actually a fiddle very similar to this in terms of four strings on top and four or five strings underneath. And it's known as the Hardanger fiddle. It's from uh, Hardingfjord in Norway. And uh, some people are tempted to say, oh, well, this is basically the same thing. They're tuned uh, a bit differently. There's many, many alternate tunings, but they're actually tuned a little higher in pitch than this one. And there's a distinctive art style that goes with them. And uh, uh, this little darling has more of a Stradivarius look to her, although she's got a little bit of art on the back. If we can't see in the film, I might try to put a picture in there. So uh, anyway, I love that instrument and went nuts when I got it. I think the reason that, in fact, they call such instruments, uh, violas d'amore, is that the uh, musicians fell in love with them. Uh, the first time I, I actually had her out of the box, um, I started playing pretty much as soon as I'd had my coffee, and around two o'clock in the afternoon, a string broke, and I had to stop, and I realized I had forgotten to eat all day long, and I'm not a guy who forgets to eat. So anyway, uh, now I'd like to introduce you <laughs> to uh, my latest acquisition, this is Faith, and uh, Faith is also, I would say, a violino d'amore, though the uh, instrument maker, like I said, advertises them as violas d'amore. And uh, the great Irish fiddler, uh, Cuivin Naralaga, which I'm probably butchering pretty well, too, um, he plays a 5x5, five five. that's what this is, 5 over the top, 5 underneath, um, and he calls it a hardanger d'amore, and I don't like that that name, uh, you know, no disrespect to, to Cuivin Naralaga. He's an amazing fiddler. Check out his music. But, um, Hardanger is a descriptor, a descriptor, Demore is a descriptor. You don't have any noun in that name. And I just, I don't like it. I'm a grammar nerd. What can I say? So, um, as I mentioned, this one's got five over the top. Now they're tuned like a five string fiddle or viola violin combination would be. So it's C, D, A, G, E. And then underneath, I've got five, and right now, I've gone with C, D, E, F sharp, A. So it's really kind of optimized for uh, D major and G major, but actually sounds pretty good in almost any key. Um, you can see a heck of a lot of pegs up here. I'm going to turn it around. The, uh, the, the sympathetic strings come through the bottom there. And I have added fine tuners to both of these instruments. Um, these are little Suzuki style fine tuners because let's face it, with a little tiny um, uh, wire string like that, you need a fine tuner. And I, I, I love fine tuners. I went for all five on that. So uh, again, I'm gonna do some other videos where I play these instruments extensively, but just to give you a little sound. <laughs> got sympathetic strings and uh, I love the way they sound personally. I don't know why any fiddler would not want to fiddle with sympathetic strings. Thanks. If you've enjoyed this, be sure to like, uh, share, tell your friends, all of that good stuff. Thanks.